Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for tuning in to my weekly guitar blog. It's February 3rd, 2013, and this week we're going to discuss how to create an effortless guitar technique routine. Now, this question was sent in by Sean. He's from Phoenix, Arizona, and he wrote in with this email. My bad technique is really driving me crazy, and I was wondering if there was a daily routine for building general guitar technique that you could recommend. I'm mainly after a set of exercises that I could do each day before playing my favorite songs that wouldn't take up too much time, but hopefully would cover a good deal of what I need to get happening with fixing my lousy chops <laughs> from Sean in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, uh, thanks for writing in, Sean. You know, creating a very straightforward, easy to follow daily guitar technique routine doesn't have to be anything overwhelming. In fact, if you approach working on guitar technique as a simple routine that you plan on doing for actually several years, you can integrate a solid workout into your daily practice schedule and then expand upon it every three or four weeks. And then you can expect over a few years to eventually wind up with phenomenal skills to get you playing through almost any song or solo that you happen to come across. Uh, so let's zoom in on the neck and have a go through a number of good exercises that you can even start working with today. Any well-planned guitar technique routine works quite nicely when it begins at a slow pace with simple fretboard exercises to coordinate the left and right hands. In my first exercise, I'll be taking a look at a study which combines a picking drill with a stretching exercise. I really like this approach as a first exercise because we can actually knock off two techniques at once, the picking coordination and the stretching. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the second guitar string at the 12th fret. and From that point, we're going to just anchor the index finger there. We're actually never going to play that note though. We're going to go uh, with the middle finger to the 13th fret, the ring finger to the 15th, and then the small finger up there at the 17th fret. And what we're going to do is on that second string, we're going to play 17, 15, 13. And then we're going to head over to the third string and play 15, 13, 15, and then come back on that second string playing 13, 15, and then 17. So the exercise will go like this. You're just using your index finger to, as an anchor point. Now, of course, uh, you can drop that down. If we move down a fret, it creates a little bit larger stretch. Now we're on 16, 14, 12, and then 14, 12, 14, coming back to the second string, 12, 14, ending on 16. So it's a bit of, of a greater stretch every time you move down a fret larger. It's a little bit more difficult to do. So that's a really good one to start off with. Now, the second study that I have, it shifts gears more into the picking coordination and speed drill side of things. Now, this will be a movable exercise on the fretboard that should over time be brought up to a very quick pace. And what we're going to do is go to the third string. And we're going to play nine, seven, and six. Then we're going to drop to the fourth string, play nine, seven, six, seven, nine, come back to six on third string, go back to the fourth string, play nine, seven, six, seven, nine again. Then on the third string, wrap up with six, going to seven. So here's the whole drill, played slowly at first. And then here it is a little bit faster. Okay. Then of course you can move that as well. Here it is moved up just a half step. It's really good for your picking when you push certain sequence drills like this to really high uh, tempos. It just it's excellent for left and right hand coordination and of course really getting your picking together. Now let's move on to the next example. This one is going to slow things down somewhat. And it's examining the fretboard hand a little bit more closely with finger independence and it's going to isolate each finger of the fretting hand uh, for increasing that hand's independence and control basically. Uh, so let's go to the fifth fret of the third string and we're just going to line up all the fingers on the third string. Now we're not actually not going to play anything on the third string. What we're going to do is we're going to play notes in position with each finger on the fifth string as well as the second. And we'll just bounce back and forth. And then we'll transfer over to the next fret up. And then we'll transfer over next finger, next fret, seventh fret. And then of course, eighth fret. 
That's a very good one for developing independence of each finger, but we can actually take this exercise a step further yet. And we can expand it to include two fingers, almost like a dual movement. That's going to allow the fretting hand to be pushed to a little bit higher level of overall technical development. Now what we're going to do is just to use a middle and index fingers on sixth and fifth, and then we'll flip them. So they'll be operating like that. And that's with the first two fingers. Now we can move over to the next two fingers. And then we can move over to the hardest ones, basically the small finger and that ring finger. It's a very good exercise. Just every time you go through a passage of notes, revert back to placing your hands once again in position on the third guitar string, just to kind of set yourself up again for the next movement that you're going to execute. Now, the next study is going to switch things up a little bit more. Uh, we're going to take things back over to some more ideas of picking hand control. And uh, we're going to incorporate a three string sweep pick study. Now, sweep picking, if you're not familiar with it, it's where you're raking down or up and then you're executing a series of notes with each of the sweeps. So uh, sweep picking is also sometimes called all, um, economy, pardon me, economy style picking. And um, it's an excellent technique workout for helping the picking hand expertly track each guitar string perfectly. Now what we're gonna do for our exercise is we're going to go to the seventh fret of third string, and we're gonna go across seven, six, five, those top three strings on third, second, and first. And it'll just be a rake going downwards. And then we're going to come upwards, going on the frets of eight, six, five. So I'll have a down and then up. Okay, then we can move that over and we can go up to the next uh, whole step. So now we're doing nine, eight, seven, and then 10, eight, seven. even take it up another little bit further there. And you practice it both with and without distortion uh, because you'll be muting more with distortion, trying to cover up some of the bleed over of the notes that you have. And, you know, on a clean channel sound, it's a little bit more difficult to uh, make things sound perfect. But uh, keep working on um, getting it to a nice uh, level of speed because uh, sweep picking is an excellent way for developing picking hand tracking of guitar strings. So definitely keep that one in mind. Now, the final exercise is one in which the right and left hands have to seriously coordinate with each other in order to track notes through basically a string skipping drill. Now what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the uh, sixth string at the fifth fret, that A note down there, and then we're going to jump from there to the fourth guitar string sixth fret. Then we're going to go back to the seventh fret of the sixth string and then jump over across to the eighth fret of the fourth string. Then when you're ready, start moving to the fifth string the same type of process. You're going fifth string now to third string, fifth fret, sixth fret, seventh fret, eighth fret. Then you can move to the fourth and second, and then you can move to the third and first. You can treat it like an exercise, just traveling back after that, or you could go into another fret position and keep moving along the neck. It's another very good one for developing your coordination between the right and the left hands. Well, you know, guitar players who eventually end up getting fairly serious with their technical ability will generally set aside at least 15 to 20 minutes of time each practice day to work on the important areas of guitar technique. Now, these areas uh, can include, but are definitely not limited to, stretching, left and right hand coordination, picking drills, string skipping exercises, and of course, finger independence. Now, these are the main areas that are at the core of good guitar technique. And once players really begin getting a solid skill set with them, uh, they'll find that learning new material actually gets easier and of course, faster. Now, this is really important if a guitarist would eventually like to work in a bar band or in a touring band. See, bands who stay really active in any sort of a circuit wind up having to learn a lot of material. So the better the player's technique, of course, the faster and easier it is to learn new songs for the act. 
Anyway, that's about all the time I have for today. Thanks, and uh, as always, have yourself a great week, and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.